So Tears of the Kingdom is finally out and what many people thought was going to be just a $70 DLC has proven itself to not only reinvent Breath of the Wild, but also maybe might be one of the best games ever made. It might be too early to say, but at least for me, Tears of the Kingdom feels different than other games. And I don't think it's because it was overhyped and it's not just because it has that Nintendo magic. Tears of the Kingdom subverts expectations by taking what worked and building something amazing on top of it, making a fantastic sandbox for you to explore for hours. There's amazing stuff stuff to do everywhere. I, like many people, have just been walking around avoiding the main dungeons just to do shrines and build funny vehicles and help the Koroks find their friends. Like Breath of the Wild before it, I feel like this is where the game truly shines. It's a giant game with three huge maps to explore, but where big empty open world games have failed, Tears of the Kingdom is a barrage of things to do. I was in the middle of one of the dungeons when I decided to take a break and explore, which led me to a town where I had to defeat a pirate clan that had taken over a beach town. I then found a message in a bottle telling me I had to make a boat and follow these glow seeds until I found a man in a cave, where I then found a giant snowy mountain that I climbed to reveal a tower that I sky dove off of onto a sky island. And then I did a snowboarding mini game that ended in a shrine puzzle. And that was just one hour out of the 50 or so hours I've sunk into this in the last week. And maybe the game's level design and art direction points you towards that path so you have that tailored experience for yourself. But Tears is one of the only games I've played that feels like it was made for me. And I know that a game that sold 10 million copies in three days isn't actually made for me, but at a time where there's more linear storytelling in games than ever, Zelda really stands out. Playing Breath of the Wild for the first time on launch day on a brand new console was sensory overload. It completely changed the way we look at the series, and the game's opening area, the Great Plateau, gives you this perfect space to dip your toes into the world before showing its full hand. It gives you typical Zelda tricks like Magnesis and the bombs and the ice, and then when you're ready, it opens the entire world to you. Tears of the Kingdom, on the other hand, puts the entirety of Breath of the Wild on its version of the Great Plateau, adds an entire game on top of it, and then opens you up to a map that nobody expected would be anywhere near this big. The marketing for Tears was basically non-existent to the point where people were worried that it was going to be this expensive DLC, but the surprise of jumping down a hole in the ground and finding there's an entire world the size of the map from the first game is ridiculous. The game itself is amazing, but the discourse online about it has been even better. Seeing videos and screenshots of people's creation like this big guy or this Korok rotisserie or this fishing boat makes me want to build something crazy of my own. But the fact that you can just skip all that and play a great normal game is wild. And sure, the game might run at 30 frames in 2023, but the actual gameplay paired with fantastic art direction makes it so it doesn't really matter. In Breath of the Wild, being able to look at anything in climate changed how people think about open world games. Similarly, Tears of the Kingdom follows the mindset of being able to build whatever you want and solve puzzles however you want. I really don't think I've solved a single shrine the way I'm supposed to, but when you can fuse a rocket to a shield and make a jetpack that just skips an entire puzzle, why wouldn't you? And there's a million things I haven't talked about, like the guy that loves holding this sign, or the lady who's really into wells, or the mayoral race where you have to hand out these little mushrooms to people in the town, but that's what makes Tears of the Kingdom so special. Just when you get tired of one thing, it shoves another amazing thing in front of you, and Nintendo pushed the boundary of what an open world game should be yet again. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing if you liked the video, and let me know down in the comments what you've liked most about Tears of the Kingdom so far. I'll see you in the next video video.